So we're here today to talk about diversity, equity and inclusion and improving DE&I is crucial in driving innovation and solving issues like the skills shortage. But the fact remains that when it comes to gender, the percentage of women in tech hovers around 27% with fewer still in leadership positions. This has remained approximately the same for years now. So what can organisations and industries do to truly and effectively improve DE&I in tech? Yeah, this is very true. It's only about 27% of women in tech, right? So what we can do as an organization, first, everything starts at the top. So leadership commitment is important. And then you need to ensure the leadership is committed to DE&I with clear, measurable goals. And then when you start from the recruitment, hiring people, you need to have a blind recruitment and then maybe partner with the organization focused on women in tech. And then of course, remove gender bias language from the job description. So once you get them in, how do you get them retained in the job? And then you need to show a really good career path for them. For example, you might develop mentorship and leadership training programs for that and then conduct career development reviews and then to see if there's any barriers you can help them to remove. So during the work, right, since some of them are working moms, so you might need to consider have a flexible work policy, maybe remote work, flexible hours. And then for the others, right, for the other parts of the company, you need to provide the DE and I training to foster an inclusive workplace. And pay equality, so you need to have a, make sure they have equal pays, right? To make sure that you close any gaps. And of course, community engagement. I think this is also important. In order to demonstrate our organization is invest in DNI, you need to support and engage with internal external initiative to promoting women in tech. That's great. Yes. Thank you. And can you point to any specific initiatives at Swire mm. Coca-Cola? Yeah, I think we have a very uh, clear mission to increase the representation of women in our workforce and then in our leadership team as well. So, for example, right now in my team, right, information security and data privacy is over 60% of them are women. So it is quite a good statistic in our team as well, since we are quite technical, right? Everyone thinking information security, data privacy, uh, or maybe a gentleman leading. So we are not the other way around. And then, of course, there's other initiative, C-suite leadership program for the women. And then this is an excellent opportunity for us who are interested in future board work to learn about how boards operate and then to position ourselves to senior executive and then to go our professional network. So that's opportunity for us to grow from not only for the senior executive, also to the boardroom directions. Thank you very much. And given your role in cybersecurity and risk management, I'm just wondering what cybersecurity trends you're seeing and how mm. is having a diverse workforce important in adopting and implementing these trends with the aim of improving your organization's overall cybersecurity posture? Well, I think right now, if you say the trends in cybersecurity, right, of course, how can I miss AI? So everyone is talking about AI, right? So we use AI also in cybersecurity to detect and respond to facts. So this is one of the trends. And then the other trend we are talking about properly is the zero trust architecture. Because nowadays, a lot of um, organizations have a lot of attack surface, right? Because of emerging technology. And then it open up an interconnected work. That means you give more opportunities for the attackers to attack. So in order to do that, we need to change our mindset previously. Hey, I trust everyone. Instead of this mindset, we also need to say, don't trust and always verify. You need to verify the identity. And that's why you come for a zero trust architecture. And then I think this is um, the two on the top. And then the other, of course, right? For the cybersecurity is ransomware defense. It's a lot of organization hit by ransomware. How we defend for the ransomware, it is also an important topic as well. 
So for us, right, if you need to, well, how important of diverse workforce in cybersecurity do you have? For example, you can border the range of perspective because we look at different things, right, in a general perspective. And then you can be more innovative and effective on this challenge. And then, of course, you can enhance problem solving because, as I say, it's different background and experience to contribute a more comprehensive approach to identify and mitigate the facts. And increasing security solution because you can have security measure considered to protect all user groups, not just well, a specific gender. And cultural insight, right? So a diverse workforce always good and different, provide different cultural behavior and tactics used in cyber attack. Finally, of course, compliance and ethics. So you mean that a diverse team means better position to understand and navigate various regulatory requirements and ethical consideration across different regions. How important are events like the Asia Women Tech Leaders Awards in championing diversity in tech? Well, I think it is a very good event, right? Because it provides visibility and recognition. And then it highlights the achievement that the female leaders or female in tech have been achieved. And as they are often underrepresented groups in tech. And they can promote them as a role model. So the other one will see, hey, the female leader can come to this position. How can I do that? So it will be a role model for them to proceed in their career. So this is the first one. The second one is the networking opportunity. By grouping have the event all together, you bring different people in different backgrounds, different region, different geographic area, and then it will be building connections and then you will have a community support to support each other. So we can share our chance. We can just like, maybe if it's close by, we can just hand out a coffee. So this is a good networking opportunity as well. And of course, it's raised the awareness since you have this event and then we can use our social media to raise awareness and then as an educational session as well. And finally, do you have any advice for women wanting to progress in the industry? Yeah, I think from my experience coming across the women in tech, right? So some of them will have what we call that imposter syndrome. They always doubt themselves. So I think believe the first one is to believe in themselves. Well, how can they believe themselves, right? Of course, you need to train full work experience. But the very important thing is use data use the fact to convince the others. Don't get emotional. And then don't be panicked because, you know, we are in a very stressful job by cybersecurity. We can sometimes have unpredictable event happen. You need to stay calm whenever it's happened and think in a logical way what you can do. And then of course, right, you need to build a strong network, as I said before. Mentorship never came to promote yourself. So this is why you get an exposure, could not connect with more people with different background and knowledge, and to learn from them. Sylvia, thank you very much. Thank you.